Eamon Holmes is a well-known TV presenter, and he's also a father of four. Eamon, were you really shocked when you first heard about legal highs as a father? Totally. Because I would have assumed, like most people, that anything that was bad for you, anything that had potential to kill, couldn't possibly be on sale. And if it was on sale, it was somewhere that was completely underhand or um, uh, some sub-social strata was available, some CD nightclub somewhere, whatever. But I now learn that they're available on the high street, they're available on petrol stations, they're available in hardware shops, they're available everywhere. And you say, you know, how crazy is this whole situation? If they're bad for people, and if youngsters are particularly vulnerable to them, then stop it. It shouldn't happen. And this question of whether it's called a legal high, which makes it sound okay, you know, cigarettes are legal. We don't call them legal cigarettes, do we? <laughs> legal alcohol as opposed to illegal alcohol. They're just the, the, it's drugs. totally misleading. It is misleading. And the, and the worrying thing is that we don't really know what's in them yeah. and that the contents change from region to region and, and week to week. But the, the thing is, as a father, as parents, you and Ruth, obviously, you have conversations with your kids. It, it's really important to make sure that you don't antagonise them and wag your finger. How, how do you start a conversation with, with older kids? I, uh, Marianne, to be honest, I start it by wagging my finger. Um, and, and, you know, I'm interested in, in your view on that. I, I'm pretty sure I reach it and I've got lines of communication with, with my children, but my fear is, I mean, I've got the, the best kids in the world. You know, one of them may take a beer or two. That used to be my worry, used to think, oh, you know, alcohol is going to be the big problem here. None of them smoke. But I think they have all potential to take legal highs because they're going to be put under peer pressure yeah. for this. So at the minute, I do wag my finger and that seems to have worked, but why do you think that's not a good idea? Well, I think that the general consensus amongst the Angelus Advisory Board experts is that if you wag your finger, a lot of them just close off. They glaze over and feel that they're on a different planet to you and that you don't understand. So we've, we're finding that the most imp important thing to engage is to express your concern, but make it safe for them to communicate without being judgmental. Yeah. Do I you do know, because young people like to experiment, that's the of thing. Of course, and that's part of growing up, I, I would have thought. I think they know their daddy and uh, their mum would have been pretty conservative and not too adventurous on that front. So sort of our example is, is quite Squaresville for them. But however, we keep lines of communication open all the time. Yeah. Now, okay, you're not, you're their friend, but primarily you're their parent. You're not there to be their friend all the time. You're there to put down parameters. And I think that they know that there's a line uh, towards which they can go, but they can't, they can't cross. And if they do so, uh, we will have be very disappointed by that. What I think another good thing is um, the friends and relationships that they have. As a parent, you do what you do, but also if you've got a child and they have a boyfriend or girlfriend, you can usually tell if that other half is a, a steadying influence or a good influence on them. And the circle of friends they keep in general. And whilst I think you can't really go and say, you will not go out with him or her or do this, I think you can express your concern. I think you can say, are you really sure you want to be with them? Are they having the right influence on you? I'm a bit worried there. Uh, ask yourself questions about this. You can always place the seed of doubt in there. Um, uh, and, I, and I hope that has some influence as well. Good friends, good partners. Yes, I think you're right. And also I think the seed of doubt with this same subject of, of legal highs, you don't have to pretend to be an expert because nobody really is, but you can say how worried you are, that you've seen uh, about it at festivals or mm -hmm. you've read about it in the newspapers. Ask them what they know. Yeah. Because very often, if you just listen, they'll tell you. And Marion, a lot of them will think that, that we as parents are killjoys, that we're stopping them having fun, we, we, we're stopping them having a good time. And in your particular case, no one needs to tell you what you want to stop and, and that how none of us ever, ever, ever want to be in the situation, same situation as you and get the phone call that, that you have to have. How do you relate to them that this is out of love and this is out of fear and this is out of protection? 
Well, I think that's the important thing, and that's good, good open communication that you've described, so that they know you care about them. You've made a big difference to me interviewing you over the years and hearing your story, and, and for someone like me, just hoping I, I will never be that parent who gets the news that you have. But, but I think the work that you do and through the Angelus Foundation over is, is just amazing and, and continued strength to do what you do and good luck to it. Thank you. Thank you very much.